This 3D world was made inside of Unity without using a single 3D mesh. But before we get into how, here's a quick word about this video's sponsor. Your mum. 3D in games is amazing. You throw a bunch of verts and triangles at your game and out comes, I don't know, quads or some sh**. But back in the day, this was a little too much for our expensive calculators. Well, I mean, it, it wasn't, they could do it, but it looked like this. Mmm, liney. So the mystical wizards back in the day came up with a way to cheat 3D with magic math. Math, magic? Math jick. Basically, instead of calculating the positions and edges of 3D geometry and then rendering those positions onto a 2D space along with calculating the relative pixel positions of whatever textures were being used, look, they faked it, okay? What they did do was take a 2D grid where each cell represents the existence, or lack of, a solid wall. Then they gave that 2D grid depth. But how's that different from real 3D? I'm getting to that. Before we can understand what's happening here, we need to understand the complicated process by which our brain perceives things in an effectively Euclidean reality. Are you ready? Things that are far away look smaller. Using simple math that people have been doing for thousands of years, they calculated the distance between the player and solid cells. That's the raycast. And then they drew a vertical line. The line centers on the middle of the screen and its length is determined by how far away it is from the player. Further away, smaller line. This process is then repeated for every horizontal pixel on the screen, which sounds like a lot, but remember back in the day, resolutions were like 320 pixels across. Well, that looks There's a few tweaks to be made before we can storm Castle Wolfenstein and shoot Mecha Hitler in the balls. First, this fisheye effect, which is caused by the difference between the actual 3D distance to the wall and the distance projected onto the player's viewplane. Okay, but basically, this effect is technically true in real life. Light from a flat plane in front of you has a little further to travel to your eyeball if it's coming from an angle, you know, off to the side of you, than it does coming straight at you. The human eye and brain compensate for this, but our little simple far away things look smaller, math does not. So we can cheese this. We can recalculate the distance as though the ray were cast from an angle perpendicular to the wall rather than where the player is. So we have straight walls, but it's basically impossible to tell where one wall ends and another begins. I mean, this shouldn't come as a surprise. Our walls are whiter than a shirtless England fan and there's no lighting to speak of. If, like me, you're looking to do the absolute bare minimum to get this thing functional, a nice trick is to apply slightly different shades to the horizontal surfaces in the grid. It's cheesy as hell, but it works. Although it's a bit weird having our walls just floating in space like that. So... Sticking with the theme of just destroying the magic of these early games, we can fake a floor and ceiling by literally just painting the top and bottom half of the screen a different colour. Remember, the lines we draw for the walls always centre on the middle of the screen, so the only way you'd ever see the horizon is if you left a hole in the map, or you had a very, very large draw distance. Okay, so that looks better, but it would be nice if we had some better shading. Giving a slightly different shading to the horizon and vertical surfaces is fine for children and Java developers, but we're proper game developers, it's time to put on the big boy pants. Fortunately, this one's actually quite easy. We already had to calculate the distance from the player to the wall, so we can just use that distance again. Pick a colour, the obvious one being black for shadows, and set the max draw distance. At a distance of zero, the surface will be rendered white. At a max draw distance or greater, it will be rendered black, and then anything in between is an equivalent mixture. You could also use other colours, like you could have light grey for fog, or green for a map full of farts. Okay, that looks... good. But it really doesn't jive with our fake floor and ceiling. So we either need our floors and ceilings to be the same colour as the shading, which is tricky when they're different colours, or we need to shade the floor and ceiling like we did with the walls. So, well, you know, calm your tits, we'll get to that. First, let's see what it looks like if we make the floor and ceiling the same colour as the shading. I mean, this this looks perfect if you want a game about getting f***ed in an alleyway. 
We could shade the floor and ceiling as it is, but we're going to be texturing them anyway, so um, I'm not going to bother. We're going to do that instead. Wait. Texturing walls isn't too bad. We know the point on the cell edge that our raycast hits, and we can essentially take that point as a percentage of the cell's width, and then apply that percentage to the texture's width to get the relevant pixel. For the vertical pixels, we know how tall our wall line is, so we can stretch and squash our slither of texture as we need. Perfect! F so I was clamping the wall height to the height of the screen because there was no point in drawing pixels that weren't on camera, which is fine for bland ass walls with no texture. But because the length of our line determines which pixels we draw, we need to factor in the full line height when we sample our texture. And finally, are the floors and the ceilings. Texturing the floors and ceilings is basically the same process, but, you know, sideways. Also, I haven't talked about this yet, but I went for this god-awful 70s carpet and wallpaper vibe because I felt the render style really suits a horror game, but I couldn't be asked making one for this video. So I settled for the horror that was the 1970s. You are welcome. Okay, one last thing. Shading the textures is exactly the same process as before, only now we're lurping between the colour of a given pixel from our texture and not just a plain white colour. And that's it. You can add sprites to the world for entities, you can turn grid cells on and off for doors. It's surprisingly easy to work with this system. Everything updates in real time, it's literally being drawn frame by frame, so any changes to the map are instantly reflected. And all this is inside of Unity, drawn onto a render texture and slapped onto a raw image in the UI, no 3D meshes in sight. And you might be wondering, why did I do this? Absolutely no reason, I just wanted to. I found it interesting, and it's my channel, and you can't tell me what to do. Unless you're a Patreon. Well, actually, no, that's a lie. You still can't tell me what to do, but I'll be interested in listening to what you have to say. Which is not to say that those of you watching now are not important. You're very important. And if you want to click that little thumb underneath the video, I would be most grateful. Not only will that make me happy, but it will tell YouTube that you liked this video, and it will make YouTube more likely to suggest videos like this to you in the future. You could also subscribe if you're not already subscribed. That also helps. And, and, and also you could leave a comment and tell me what you liked about the video or didn't like. Preferably what you liked, but you know, also what you didn't, it's going to be the not like, isn't it? You're going to end up telling me what you don't like. God damn it.